Hello, my name is Metin Tolan. I am professor for experimental physics at TU Dortmund University, uh, and I am one of the authors of the book Shaken, Not Stirred, uh, James Bond in the Spotlight of Physics. We are here at TU Dortmund University in a lecture hall, um, and I will now give you a short introduction into uh, my book. Um, in order to do this, uh, I will make a small presentation. And so I let us switch to the presentation. You see that I will give at the beginning a very brief intro, intro, introduction into James Bond. The same is done in the book. In the book, the, the book starts also with a brief introduction into the character of James Bond. Then we will make one example, one physics example. This is the real physics, the real content of the, of the book. And at the end, I will tell you also a little bit more of the book. Um, let us start with the inventor of James Bond. It was the British novel writer Ian Fleming. He wrote the book uh, Casino Royale in the year 1953 about a spy who is working between the two superpowers, United States and Soviet Union. And uh, this book became very famous over the years. Um, and also very successful. And so he wrote more book ab ab about the adventures of this spy um, who he has uh, created, and these adventures became also very successful. And so it was no wonder that uh, this character uh, found the way to the movies. Um, and the character is the famous uh, spy um, James Bond. So let's start with the name of James Bond. Uh, I will show you now all actors who played James Bond so far um, when they introduce themselves with a very special way. James Bond. My name is Bond. James Bond. My name is Bond. James Bond. Who are you? Bond. James Bond. Thank you, Mr. The name's Bond. James Bond. The name's Bond. James Bond. You all know this. My name is Bond. James Bond. And you probably also know that James Bond is an ornithologist from Philadelphia. Uh, you think now probably this is a coincidence. No, this is not. Um, you must know that Ian Fleming, he, he loved birds, he was very interested in birds, and he had very much, very many books about birds. Among them was this book, written by James Bond, the ornithologist. And it's really the real story. Ian Fleming told us to reporters that he took the name from the ornithologist, ornithologist James Bond and uh, used it for his spy. So this is interesting. And only if you know this, you can really understand the full sense of the following very small clip from the movie, uh, from, from the movie Die Another Day. What about you? Oh, I'm just here for the birds. Hmm. Ornithologist. So, you see, this is, of course, a reminiscence uh, to, the, to Ian Fleming and to the real James Bond, the ornithologist. Okay, the um, a, a description of James Bond is also given in the novels of Ian Fleming. Maybe the most striking uh, thing of James Bond is his double O number, 007. Double O means he has a license to kill. When you look into his passport, another very interesting fact appears. Yeah, here is his passport, and then his place of birth is Wattenscheid in Germany. Wattenscheid is only 15 kilometers from here away. So we are almost at the birthplace of James Bond. How can James Bond have a birthplace? Well, there is an official, an official biography of James Bond. This exists. 
And in this official biography, it is fixed that the birthplace of James Bond is Wattenscheid. He was born on the 11th of November in the year 1920 in Wattenscheid, Germany. The story why this happened is also written down in this biography. So uh, this is clear. James Bond is born very close from this place here. Of course, James Bond has weaknesses. Alcohol, as we will see, we will see that, uh, that he is drinking his vodka martinis, shaken, not stirred. I will come to this. This is also the title of the book. And what is important when we talk about physics, that James Bond has a height of 183 centimeters and a mass of 76 kilograms. This is fixed by Ian Fleming, and we have to use this for our calculations if we need it. Um, by the way, Daniel Craig came, for instance, very close to these numbers. Daniel Craig has a height of 182 centimeters and a mass of 78 kilograms. So this is very close, and I would say this is within the margin of error. But let's now go to physics. Uh, I will show you now one physics example uh, from the book. The book contains over 20 of such examples. We will now um, look at one. It is from the movie The Man with the Golden Gun from the year 1974. And let's take a look. Here's Bridges, two miles back. I sure am, boy. Ever heard of Evil Knievel? <laughs> I've never done that before. Oh, neither have I, actually. Wow. Very interesting. And, uh... Let's take a closer look what happened. So, we see that James Bond is in this car. He is driving on this ramp. And since the ramp is a little bit, there is a torsion in the ramp, the car is not just jumping over the river. It is making one rotation around the longitudinal axis, and then it lands here on the tires. So, what can we investigate here? You must know, very often in physics, it is more difficult to find an interesting question rather than to get the solution of the question. So let's think about it. As a physicist, of course, I would put a coordinate system uh, into this scene. Then, of course, we can say uh, the length of the ramp is given, the angle of the ramp is given, the, the torsion angle of the ramp is given, the distance between the two ramps is given. So, if you think about this, if all this is given, and if this really works, then you only need the initial speed of the car, and then it will work. Because the only unknown is the initial speed of the car. So, if you know this initial speed, you sh should be able to do it with your car. So this is an interesting question. If I give you the initial speed, then you should be able to do this stunt with your car at home. This is interesting. Because there are no other variables. Of course, you must trust me. I hope that you trust me. Um, this is really so simple. So our question now, which we are going to solve is, can you do this with your own car? This is, this is an interesting question, I must, I must say. Can you do this with your own car? Or can I also do this with my own car? First of all, we have to, to check, was this really 
was this really a stunt, a real stunt, or was there some trick? Are you the chap who designed or did the car stunt in the Houston Astrodome? No, obviously it was a real stunt. It has been done by stuntmen at the beginning of the 1970s of the last century. So this makes it even more interesting. So this is something which in reality works. So how can this work? Can we do this with our cars also? So when you calculate the trajectories of the car, which is not very interesting and is also not very difficult, then you see the blue trajectory, which is the exact calculation, and the red one was done without the rotation in the air. So you see, they differ not very significantly. So if you only would like to come to the other side of the river, it seems not to be very difficult. If you also want to land on the tires, it's of course another story. So also, this, this rotation does not influence too much the traje trajectory of the car. So, again my question, again my question, can everybody do this? Can you do this with your car at home? The answer is no, you can't. Why can't you do this? Because here the trick is the car. You need a special car for this. Because rotations in physics are quite difficult. Um, rotations are only stable, as a physicist is saying, when they are done um, around axis with a homogeneous mass distribution. So around the axis A, B or C. And not when you have a rotation around the axis D because this is not a symmetric, symmetry axis, not an axis with a mass distribution around the axis which is homogeneous. And then something happened, I can show this to you, um, here, you, here I have this body, yeah? And this means when I rotate this body around this axis, which is going uh, through this yellow area in the middle, then the rotation is stable. You see that it's a stable rotation around this axis. When you now make a ro rotation around this diagonal axis, then you see that this body starts to tagger and the rotation is absolutely not stable. So it is a little bit quick with this. Uh, therefore, we will do it in a much smarter way. I have another experiment for you. The experiment, this is this gyroscope. And this gyroscope is now our car. And this means this is our, this is the car. And, um, and so here we have the motor, here's the back of the car, and this is the rotation axis of the car. And now we do the experiment two times. First, what we do is we have here in the gyroscope two big masses, and on the back side the two big masses at these points, at these and these points, so that around the axis the mass distribution is totally homogeneous. You can see here the, uh, the uh, gyroscope. Yeah, here's the, the gyroscope. I can show it to you a little bit better. This is the gyroscope for our experiment. And now we will do the experiment. We will do the experiment, by the way, twice. So I will show you this now a little bit more. This is the experiment, um, which you can see. You can see that the, the masses, they are homogeneously distributed, and, and now I'm going to spin the gyroscope, then it is spinning, and when I make a small, a very small hit, then it is still stable spinning, it is stable spinning. So you have to memorize now this video, this, uh, not video, this is this experiment, and um, this experiment, um, we will do this experiment a second time. Um, so I have to change now a little bit the experiment. I will tell you in a minute uh, what I did. And while I'm going to change this experiment here with this screwdriver, um, I will show you what uh, the makers of this stunt uh, have said why this stunt was functioning.
typed on a computer. The computer was used by the National Highway Safety Bureau in the investigation and reconstruction of single vehicle automobile accidents worldwide. The firm that happened to do that was a company in Buffalo, division of Cornell University. An ingenious engineer there by the name of Raymond McHenry visualized that we could do a complete football spiral type with a full-size automobile. The exercise is quite complicated because the, the car has to be perfectly balanced. The steering wheel is in the middle. The car would have been cut in half, widened about two inches. Everything was then centralized and balanced. We've Aha. What they are saying is, in order to make such a stunt, you need a car which is perfectly balanced. They cut a, a car in the middle, they put the steering wheel in the middle, they put the tank in the middle and the motor exactly in the middle, and the driver in the middle, they cut the roof of the car and they replaced it by a very light roof and with such a prepared car it worked. Why? Well, let's go back to our experiment. Our experiment here, we change now the experiment. I have changed um, the, the gyroscope. Now you can see that on the front side and on the back side we have the heavy masses on, at the same place so that around the rotation axis we have here a lot of mass, nothing, a lot of mass, nothing. Now the mass distribution around the rotation axis is not symmetrical anymore. And we will, we will do the same experiment with the gyroscope again. I will spin it and um, then you will see um, what happened. So now we have the mass distribution differently. As I said, I changed it. And again, you, you'll see now with a very small thing, this gyroscope moves totally chaotic. So when you have not a homogeneous mass distribution, a rotation is not stable, as you can see. This is the major point in this stunt. You need this special car, so if you want to do this with your car, you have to do some welding work before, um, otherwise it will not work. Otherwise, otherwise this happens, because uh, this is what we know. When a car is moving off the street, it never just turns one, uh, one uh, longitudinal rotation around and then lands on the tires and you can drive away. So in general, such a rotation is very chaotic. But if you have such a special car, then you of course need only the angle of the ramp, you need um, the length of the ramp, what you also need is, um, this is what you can measure, you need this angle also, this torsion angle of the ramp, and then everybody, everything is given, you have to calculate a little bit, and you can calculate now the initial speed you need to drive to the ramp. So with, with the real numbers, you can see them there. You can calculate that you have to have a, a, a speed of 64 kilometers per hour uh, on the ramp plus minus three. This, is, this can be achieved. So what do you have to do? You have to drive with this speed, 64 kilometers, to this point and what do you have to do then? Nothing. The rest is done by physics for you. It's for free. You're, you also should not do anything in the car because the mass distribution can suffer from this. So the stuntman was fixed in the car completely by belts, completely fixed, so that he can't move. He could just uh, uh, reach the steering wheel a little bit um, and with this fixation and this special car, it worked. So you see, there is a lot of physics in this, and this is, this is quantitatively described in the book. Yeah, this is, this is one of what makes this book very special and what makes it also very different from other books. Because all examples which you can find in this book are discussed quantitatively. And 
first in words, and then there is a subsection always, details, details for know-it-alls. If you are a know-it-all, then you find there are also some calculations. This may also be of interest for teachers of high school um, kids. Uh, when you look for interesting examples in physics, you find them in this book. And you don't have to calculate all this by yourself. You are, I, I know your time is short, so you can just take these examples and in the details for know-it-alls you find the calculations and then you can do this with your school kids um, at high school, for instance. So a, th this could be ideal to have some nice examples. Um, you will find 20 of these examples in the book. Um, in the same way as I showed it to you, they are presented. First, the video sequence is de described, then the physics is explained, and then in the details for know-it-alls, for them who like it, you will find also some formulas. Okay, the title of the book is Shake Can Not Start. James Bond loves his vodka martini, Shake Can Not Start. Can I do something for you, Mr. Bond? Uh, just a drink, a martini, shake and not stirred. Yes, sir? The lady will have a Bacardi on the rocks. For the gentleman, vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Touche. Miss Kennedy, would you get me a medium dry vodka martini? What a Shaken, nice... not stirred. Cut. And what words do you live by? The trick is to quit while you're still here. Well, that's one trick I've never learned. Perhaps you'll show me how it's done. Vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. And for you? The same. So obviously it's important for James Bond that he gets his vodka martini shaken, not stirred. Why he is ordering his vodka martini in this way, this is also explained in this book, in the last chapter. I show you an experiment which helps you in understanding this. Look at this. You see some large heavy balls and some small light balls. When you put them together, and when you then shake the mixture, then for some reason the large heavy balls are going to the top. And what that, this has to do with James Bond's vodka martinis is explained in the book. So if you're interested, look inside this book. Okay, um, I have to thank my co-author Joachim Stolze. Uh, he was also a member of the project. With the project, I mean, we originally started this 13 years ago with a seminar with 41 students. They worked also all these things together with us out and we, we created a manuscript for, for a book at this time in German of this. Um, and uh, so my thanks are going to him and of course also to our students. And this is also the reason why we donate all the money Mr. Stolze and me got from selling this book, or get for, will get from selling this book, we donate this money to our students. So this money is not getting to poor professors, it's really getting to our students. We have a lot of very good physics students here at TU Dortmund University, and if you buy this book, the money is getting to our students. This is what I wanted to tell you also at the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit this presentation and I also hope that you now think, well, I want to learn more about physics and James Bond. So if yes, take a look into this book. Thank you for your attention.